So to find the area between two curves, we use the same basic technique that we used to find the area underneath one curve. So remember that we split the area into infinitely small rectangles, and then we found the area of one rectangle, and then added all the rectangles up with integration. So we're going to do the same thing here. If we have the area between these two curves, f of x and g of x, then one rectangle of the area will have a width of a very small x, or dx, and the height will be the big function minus the small function. In this case, f of x minus g of x. That's the height of each of these rectangles. And so the area of one of these small rectangles is f of x minus g of x times dx. So if we want to find the area of this whole region from x equals a to x equals b, then we just integrate f of x minus g of x times dx from a to b. And that adds up the areas of all of these small rectangles to get the area of the whole region between the curves. So when we have this setup, the length the height of each rectangle will be the bigger function minus the, the smaller function. So in problems like these, where they don't give you the boundaries of integration, you have to find them yourself. And to do that, we need to find where the curves intersect, because that's the, that those are the boundaries of the area between the curves, is where they intersect. So we just set these equal to each other, and we find that they intersect at x equals negative 2 and x equals 3. So we know an uh, interval of integration will be from negative 2 to 3. And by sketching the graph or plugging in values of x, we know that the x plus 6 function is always larger than x squared on this interval. So remember, bigger minus smaller. So we have the x plus 6 minus x squared times dx. And we integrate that from negative 2 to 3. And doing that gives us the area of this region. So sometimes the, the, one, the function that's bigger and smaller will change over the interval that you want. So in that case, you have to split up the area and use more than one integral to evaluate. For example here, we can see that we have one region here and another here. We can't use the same two curves on the top and bottom for the whole interval. Because this curve is always on top, but from here to here, this line x minus 2 is on the bottom. Well, from here to here, the function, the other function is on the bottom. So we have to find the points of intersection. And since this function is x equals y squared, it'll be easier to find the intersections in terms of y by just setting the x's equal to each other. So we write this function as x equals y plus 2. Then setting y plus 2 equal to y squared, we can solve for the intersection points in terms of y, which turn out to be negative 1 and 2. And from there, we can solve for the x values of the intersection points by just plugging these into one of the functions. So our boundaries of integration are x equal 1 and x equal 4. So now we have to find the big and small functions over these intervals. So first we need to rewrite this function in terms as an explicit function of y. So we get y equals plus minus square root x. So above the x-axis, the function will be positive square root x, and below, it'll be negative square root x. So you can see this red area 
it goes from 0, that's where these two parts of the function intersect, until our first intersection point, which we found to be x equals 1. So the big function is positive square root x, and the small function is negative square root x. So the big minus the small, and integrate that from 0 to 1. Now the blue area from 1 to 4, the big function is x positive x square root x, and the small function is x minus 2. So big minus small, and then integrate that from 1 to 4. And then once we have both of these integrals evaluated, we just add up these results to get the total area between these two curves. Now, we can also integrate with respect to y, which means instead of horiz vertical rectangles, uh, little rectangles will be horizontal. Because we, we're, the length of each rectangle will be the x value of this function minus the x value of this function. And then the width of each rectangle will be a small y, or dy. So in this case, we can say that we take the function on the right minus the function on the left, and then integrate from a to b, whatever our boundaries are. So the previous example we did would actually be easier to do in terms of y, since we would not have to split up the area into multiple integrals. So first, we already know that the y intersecting points are negative 1 and 2, since we found them in the last example. So then we rewrite this in terms of, as a function of y, which would be x equals y plus 2. And this curve, y plus 2, is always to the right of y squared. So we do right minus left, x plus y plus 2 minus y squared, dy, and then integrate that from y equals negative 1 to y equals 2. And then we evaluate this integral to get the same answer. So you can always do in terms of y or x, it'll be the same answer, but you have to figure out which way it will be easier.